Pablo and the Last Taper. Imagine the sound of all the most fearsome creatures in the rainforest converging with a thunderous symphony of nature's might. Imagine the roars in the tangled underbrush, the deafening hiss from the anacondas, screeches and howls from the treetops. Imagine that all these creatures are coming for you. Well, you wouldn't hang around, would you? Well, hang around and you'll find out more about who was facing all of that. And we'll start our story in a quieter corner. A corner of the rainforest, in fact. It's where we find Pablo. Pablo loved animals. And I have to say, spent more time exploring the forest, playing with his friends, than he did going to school or doing chores for his parents. There was Wanda the Spider, who was as large as a dinner plate and wove webs strong enough for a very fat parrot to stand upon, although that would be a very silly thing to do and probably the last thing a parrot would do. Then there was Antony the Anaconda, of course, a fearsome snake who was actually quite a good laugh, and Peter the Panther, Howard the Howling Monkey and his amazing climbing skills, Terry the Tree Frog, and then there was Daisy the Cheetah. Now, if you're really smart, and I'm sure you are, even if you hide it well, you might have realised that you don't normally find cheetahs in rainforests. This is true, but this is also a story, so you sort of have to go along with that, all right? Although there is a reason she ended up there. It's because she was meant to be sent into another story. I mean, a local zoo. But she managed to escape, and rainforests are a pretty good place to hide out. Daisy did keep going on about how the African savannah was amazing and how they should all organise a big group trip, which got a bit boring, but she was pretty cool too. One hot and steamy day, Pablo was mooching through the forest, avoiding chores in school as usual. He passed the spider's tree. Wanda is a very old spider, older than the forest itself, it was rumoured. She wove her webs around the tallest tree, so thick that you couldn't see the tops, and shunned the other animals. It was said she was the keeper of the rainforest's secrets, but you had to be pretty brave to ask her to spill any of them. Hope you're having a good day, Wanda, said Pablo as he went past whistling. Wanda peered suspiciously down, but then waved one hairy leg before scuttling away. He walked on for a bit through the lush undergrowth and came across an animal he hadn't seen for a while. It was munching forlornly at some very spiky looking leaves and looking miserable. It was a taper. What's the matter? he asked. My herd is dying. As the youngest they say I might be the last taper of all. Pablo was shocked. But I've seen your herds around the marsh pits. That was before the men with chainsaws came. Oh, 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 they destroyed our homes and the things we eat. Many starved. We are sick and dying. Pablo listened sadly. Everyone knew the foresters were slowly taking the rainforest land, sending animals fleeing from their homes. Many had already perished under their relentless drive. The man who owned the forestry company, Incrementus Wolf, was a greedy man who even the president couldn't seem to stop. Pablo had seen him on the news. President Pablo is more interested in a poxy little tree frog than his own people, he jeered. Terry the tree frog, who was sitting on Pablo's shoulder, looked very insulted at this. I'll have you know, I'm the most poisonous creature around here. Don't worry, just don't lick me. But natural herbs, plants, flowers of the sort we can't imagine, they may lie in the canopy and undergrowth. They could cure all the diseases, like the fabled moonflower, cure all illnesses, and even prevent death, said the interviewer urgently. But that's just a fairy story. No one's ever found one, so they can't stop me. So there, Incrementus huffed, and the president who was struggling to get a word in edgeways just shrugged. It hasn't been found, so there's nothing I can do, said the president weakly. Pablo screamed at the screen. No one's ever looked for the moonflower. That's why no one's found it. Then he narrowed his eyes. 
If we find the Moonflower, the President will have to stop the diggers. It was a plan. And plans needed really clever, cunning people to help. Wanda! Wanda the Spider knew everything! There was no time to lose. Terry leapt onto Toppy's back and the three of them ran to the wisest creature in the wood. They called to her and eventually they saw her cautiously poke her beady-eyed head out. We need to find the Moonflower. You know everything about the forest, so where might we find it? No idea. Dunno. This was pretty normal for Wanda. Legends had been written for centuries about her rudeness. Centuries? Hmm. Pablo had a sudden thought. Hang on. What could make a spider live for centuries? Toppy looked thoughtful too. And which spider is known for being very, very secretive about what grows on her tree? Wanda, you're busted, yelled Pablo. We know you've got moonflowers up there. You have to let the world know. Shan't, came the muffled squeak. I grow them. Now sling your hook. But it's the only way you can save the rainforest. You need the forest too. Before they could argue any more, there was a deep rumbling. The foresters. They could hear the crunch and crackle underfoot. They're coming right now. They'll destroy your tree and the precious moonflowers. Quick, said Pablo. Toppy, rouse all the animals in the forest. It's our last chance to stop them. We have to save the moonflower tree and hope Wanda gets a blooming grip on the situation. Word rippled through the forest. Because it was Pablo who was asking, they rallied to the call. The sun hung low in the sky, casting dappled rays of golden light through the dense canopy above. Birds of every colour and size sang joyfully in the treetops, and the air was thick with the scent of blooming orchids and exotic fruits. The foresters, armed with chainsaws and clad in rugged gear, had been working hard, but they had no idea what awaited them. As they continued their work, a low, rumbling growl echoed through the trees. The foresters paused, their hearts pounding in their chests, as the ground beneath their feet seemed to tremble. It was a sound like no other, one that sent shivers down their spines. They exchanged worried glances and grasped their tools tightly. From the shadowy depths of the rainforest, a mighty roar pierced the air, and the ground shook once more. The foresters' eyes widened in astonishment as they saw them coming. Emerging from the underbrush were the most fearsome and majestic creatures of the rainforest, joining forces in a united front against those who threatened their home. First came the mighty jaguars, their golden fur and fierce eyes gleaming with determination. They prowled silently, their powerful muscles rippling as they moved ready to strike from the shadows. Following close behind were the colossal anacondas, slithering gracefully through the tangled vines, their massive bodies coiled and ready to strike. With gleaming eyes and sharp fangs, they were a force to be reckoned with. Above, the treetops rustled as a fleet of harpy eagles soared down, their enormous wingspans casting ominous shadows. With talons sharp enough to pierce through the steel, they circled above, ready to dive and defend their beloved forest. From the trees, the howler monkeys added their voices to the chorus, their eerie calls echoing through the jungle like a haunting war cry. They swung through the branches with lightning speed, ready to pelt intruders with a barrage of fruit and nut. The foresters stood in awe and disbelief, their chainsaws now forgotten. The rainforest had come alive with a symphony of nature's fury, as creatures big and small joined forces in an incredible show of unity. Behind them all strode Pablo and the last taper. And with Daisy the cheetah, of course, who, as we know, had meant to end up at the zoo, but had escaped. She roared her best too. 
As the pack of fearsome rainforest animals approached in huge numbers, the foresters had no choice to make. Run! And they were gone. The animals were astonished and cheered and howled in happiness or croaked or hissed or... Well, you get the idea. They made a lot of noise. What was even more astonishing was the sight of Wanda picking her way towards them shyly, away from her webs for the first time ever. You're right, she said. The moon flowers don't belong to me. They belong to the world. And then there was more cheering, hissing, croaking, roaring, and all the other stuff. Soon, the precious moonflower tree became headline news across the world. President Pablo was finally able to stop the foresters, and peace returned to the rainforest. And who was the first to find out the flower's power other than Wanda? Toppy! Toppy and his herd. They nibbled on the blooms and quickly became strong once more, and the herd began to flourish and grow. And Pablo and Toppy stayed firm friends, and often reminisced about their adventure around the campfire at night. You might not be the last taper, said Pablo, but hopefully you're the last to face extinction, he said. And taper was happy to agree. Got an idea for a story? Tell us the title at funkidslive.com forward slash story quest and we could bring your story to life. For a new story each week, make sure you hit subscribe or follow so you don't miss a single episode. Harry, it's amazing having you as our story master. Uh, tell us, how does it feel being a story master, being in control of a story that we make for you? It feels really exciting because... Uh... Tapirs are my favourite animal, uh, and I know that tapirs aren't really regarded as a great animal. Well, I didn't know much about them until I read your story. Why are they your favourite animal? Uh, I like them because they look uh, like a pig, but they also look a bit like a horse. <laughs> so it's like a mixture of the two. Um T tell me, where did you, like, discover tapirs were your favourite animal? Because they're not everyone's favourite creature, are they? Uh, I discovered them when we were learning about uh, rainforests in school. Uh, and they were talking about what, animal live, what animals live in the rainforest on the forest floor. And I saw a tapir and I really liked it. Wow. Well, well, the tapir we made for you was called Pablo. Um, wh what did you think of him and and his story? Was he a good tapir for you? Uh, I I liked him because he has a good personality. Yeah. Um, if you met a tapir, what type of personality would you expect them to have? A probably a very uh, uninterested, <laughs> anxious uh, manner because they probably don't know uh, humans very well. Yeah, maybe. I think they'd be a bit grumpy. I've all, I don't know why. I just always think they'd be a bit grumpy. Um, what was your favourite part of the story? Uh, I liked when uh, they uh, walked past uh that the spider because I found that he was very interesting. Well we loved writing a story for you. Just tell me what, what made you want to send in an idea for Story Quest? Uh I was on my way to my swimming lesson and I was a bit bored. So and I was listening to the radio. Then it came up about uh where you can type type it in so my mother uh got her phone and t typed what the story i wanted and she sent it off and here we are and we've made it for you well listen we have loved having you as a story master harry thank you so much thank you <laughs>